ओके सर थैंक यू गुड मॉर्निंग डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू अनदर लाइव ऑनलाइन वेबिनार क्लास फॉर द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ जुआलॉजी दिस इज राजकुमार फ्रॉम टी एस आर एस जे सी लिंगमपल्ली डियर स्टूडेंट्स द प्रीवियस क्लास वी हैव कंप्लीटेड इम्यून सिस्टम एंड टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विथ अ न्यू चैप्टर दैट इज जेनेटिक्स ओके genetics will have two uh, two lectures today i will be taking the lecture 1 and tomorrow i'll be taking the lecture 2 of this genetics okay, without taking much of your time let's get into the class genetics so genetics is the sixth chapter from your second year zoology and this is the lecture 1 what we are going to learn from today's class today we will have explanation on question and answers and we will have discussion on important questions of 2 marks 4 marks and 8 marks and we will also practice some of the neat questions okay so it is highly focused upon uh, the examination okay, which is going to be conducted for you which is intermediate public examination <coughs> hope you follow the class uh, let's go to the class let us start with the two marks question first two marks question what is pleiotropy so this is the question what is pleiotropy for this question you must write the answer like this that a single gene often influences more than one phenotypic trait this phenomenon of multiple effects of a single gene is called pleiotropy so usually one gene controls one character let me repeat one single gene controls only one character but here a single gene is influencing more than one phenotypic character or the trait that is why it's called pleiotropy okay pleiotropy means a single gene if it is influencing more than one uh, phenotypic character or the trait it's called pleiotropy let's see the next question too much what are the antigens causing abo blood grouping where they are present let's see antigens so the blood grouping the group of the blood uh, our blood group is actually decided by the antigens which are present on the surface of the rbc okay the the surface of rbc contain the antigens so presence of antigens decides the blood group let's see which antigen is required for which group blood group a the person who is having the blood group a persons have antigen a on the rbc surface and the blood group b people or the blood group b persons have antigen b and blood group ab persons have antigens a and b on their rbcs so blood group o persons will have no antigens this is the uh, the occurrence of uh, the blood group right blood group a have the antigen a blood group b have the antigen b and blood group ab have antigen both a and b on the rbc and uh, blood group o have no antigens on their surface okay let's go to the third question next one so pleiotropy you know, the first question was about the pleiotropy so this is regarding that this picture is regarding that so a single gene from the dna what it is doing it is controlling or it is influencing the multiple traits more than one character it is controlling so trait 1 trait a trait b trait c so single gene having control over three traits or more than one trait is called the pleiotropy the condition is known as pleiotropy let's go to the next question what are multiple alleles So, what are the multiple alleles? Kirti, madam, please mute yourself. Ah, uh, what are the multiple alleles? Let's see. Sometimes a gene may have more than two alleles. Okay? When more than two allele allele forms occurs at the same locus on the homologous chromosomes of an organism, they are called multiple alleles. Okay? So, single gene have two alleles usually if there are if, if a gene has more than two alleles it's called multiple allelism okay so 
they are called multiple alleles let's go to the next question what is erythroblastosis fetalis the name itself says erythroblastosis that means erythroblast cells they are, they are what happening to them fetalis they are getting blasted they are getting destroyed okay in the fetal stage hence it is called fetalis let's see what is the answer for this question a severe hemolytic disease of a fetus or a newborn infant caused by the production of maternal antibodies against the fetal red blood cells okay usually involving rh incompatibility between the mother and the fetus it is a condition it is a severe hemolytic condition where the uh, the maternal antibodies destroy the rbc of the infant okay so it is due to the rh incompatibility between mother and the fetus this is the answer that you need to write so erythroblastosis fetalis is also important for the four marks question if it is asked for two marks you should write only this much let's go to the fifth question multiple alleles let's see the picture regarding the multiple alleles multiple alleles is when more than two alleles can code for a gene <coughs> each gene has more than two alleles that condition is called as multiple allelism the examples for multiple alleles is uh, the blood groups okay blood groups is decided by three alleles let's see the next question A child has blood group O. If the father has blood group A and the mother blood group is B, work out work out the genotypes of the parents and the possible genotypes of the other parent, other offsprings. This is already we have discussed in the uh, class. Okay, while we were teaching about the genetics class, we discussed this. Answer is the child genotype. Child's genotype here is I O and I O. Why I O I O? Because uh, the blood group is O. That's why uh, the genotype will be I O and I O. Father's possible genotype will be I A or I A and I O. Okay. And mother's possible genotype must be I B and I O because from mother and father gametes are shared. So. I A okay we can take I A as one gamete and I O as another gamete. So from father there is a, a allele I O shared and from mother I O shared. So both uh, becomes the I O and I O in the child. Okay? So that is how uh, the possibility is there to get the group P group O. Possible genotypes of the other offsprings is I A I B I A I O and I B I O. these are this is the answer regarding this question let's see the next question what is polygenic inheritance okay polygenic inheritance the name itself says polygenic inheritance occurs when one characteristic is controlled by two or more genes poly means more genic means uh, the genes polygenic inheritance the inheritance which is controlled by more than one gene that's called polygenic inheritance examples for the polygenic inheritance are human polygenic inheritance are the examples are height weight and skin color so height weight and skin color are basically controlled by more than one gene okay let's see the next question what is haplodiploidy so haplodiploidy it's a condition we learn in while we were learning about honey bees and their genotype isn't it so what is the answer you need to write regarding this haplodiploidy is a mechanism of sex determination that is common in the hymenopterian insects such as honey bees ants and wasps okay in them we find this kind of a condition called haplodiploidy in this system the sex of the offspring is determined by the number of sets of chromosomes it receives okay so the number of sets of chromosomes actually decides the sex of the offspring we will learn about haplodiploidy in the next slide don't worry let's go to the next question which is about what are bar bodies bar bodies 
so we have learned this in the class the answer will be in female mammals the extra x chromosome undergoes heterochromatinization and becomes inactive during early embryonic development this appears as a darkly stained body attached to the nuclear membrane so these are called the bar bodies so let me uh, remember you one more thing females have uh, the sex chromosome pair which is xx is it it male have xy female have xx so here when uh, the when it is having more two xs in the person the suppose female have xx so in them one chromosome will be active whereas another x one x will be active another x will be inactive the inactive x chromosome what happens it uh, undergoes the heterochromatinization okay it is it, it becomes darkly stained okay? that is called heterochromatinization so this darkly stained chromosome uh, which is the extra x chromosome attaches to the uh, the nuclear membrane okay so these are called the bar bodies it is found in the female uh, preferably neutrophils okay and also the cheek cells we we, we see these bar bodies and uh, bar bodies are also called drumstick bodies let's go to the next question haplodiploidy let's see what uh, what is happening in the haplodiploidy haplodiploid sex determination in b see the slide so the queen b which is a female have two sets of chromosome hence it is a diploid in stage so this queen b we know that queen b lays the eggs the eggs which are not fertilized they become drones okay. the eggs of the queen which are not fertilized uh, they convert into the drone which 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 remains as haploid why it is haploid because the gametes are always haploid so it is originating from the single gamete hence it is a hence it is haploid in its condition and uh, if if the insect has a single set of chromosome it's called a haploidy condition okay so it becomes male male uh, which is also called as a drone let's see the a drone this drone haploid drone uh, it, it uh, if the uh, the queen bee's eggs are fertilized with a drone then uh, the whatever the offsprings are formed they are fa they are having two sets of chromosomes since they have two sets of chromosomes they become female okay so single set of chromosomes become the male and uh, two sets of chromosomes becomes the female so these female bees as which are in diploid condition are called workers so this worker uh, female bee usually, usually converts into a queen bee if a queen bee dies okay? so this is how the haploid diploid determination takes place in the honey bees you should remember one thing that there is there is no fusion there is no fertilization in the formation of drone it's called parthenogenesis okay parthenogenesis since it is uh, this uh, kind of a parthenogenesis intentionally done by the queen bee it is called uh, arhenotoki parthenogenesis this is the haplodiploidy sex determination haploid condition seen in the male bees and diploid condition is seen in the female bees which are called workers worker bees okay let's go to the next question here you can see the drones have no father but they have a grandfather let's go to the next question what is klein felter's syndrome so it is a kind of a genetic abnormality uh, which is caused by the uh, extra chromosomes <coughs> see what what is, uh, is the answer you need to write klein felter's syndrome is a genetic disorder caused by trisomy of 23rd pair so the karyotype will be uh, 47 that is x x y the sex chromosomes so usually human being contain uh, 46 chromosomes whereas in the people who are uh, who are having this disorder called klein felter syndrome they have one extra chromosome in the 23rd pair okay? 
which makes x x y. That means an extra x is added to the main. The principal effects of effects are hypogonadism and uh, reduced fertility. Slight enlargement in the beast is also seen, which is called gynecomastia. If male, if the males uh, develop the breast or the if they have production of milk, that's called uh, gynecomastia, which is seen in the disorder called Klinefelter's syndrome. We will see about uh, Klinefelter's syndrome in the next slide. Don't worry. Let's see the next question. What is Turner's syndrome? Turner syndrome is also a genetic abnormality, but which is uh, uh, the condition where monosomy of 23rd pair is seen. In the Klinefelter syndrome, one chromosome is added, whereas in the Turner syndrome, what has happened? One uh, chromosome is deleted. Okay. This addition of chromosomes or the deletion of chromosomes is because of the non disjunction of the chromosomes. Uh, in the process of meiosis, okay. In meiosis, if non-disjunction, non-disjunction means uh, not uh, sub, uh, non-separation of the chromosomes is called non-disjunction. Okay. See, when it has monosomy, means if one chromosome is deleted, its karyotype will be forty-five, and there is only one X in their uh, in their uh, cells. So it is called a Turner syndrome. The symptoms of the Turner's female are short stature, gonadal uh, diagnosis we see, and webbed neck and broad shield like chest with widely spread nipples is seen in the Turner syndrome. We will see the picture in the next slide, don't worry. But uh, in the Klein, you should also know one more thing that Klinefelter syndrome the people with Klinefelter syndrome contain the uh, bar body in them. So usually males do not have any bar body. If the bar body is detected in the male, so he will be, uh, uh, he, we can say that he is affected by the Klinefelter syndrome. But whereas in the Turner syndrome, the female have no bar body. Okay. So absence of bar body can be the diagnosis of Turner's syndrome. Let's go to the next uh, slide where we learn about the Klein-Pelter syndrome. See the Klein-Pelter Klein syndrome, the defect is the sex chromosomes. Genotype will be the addition of X, the extra X chromosomes. The number of chromosomes is abnormal. It is 47. And uh, these males have tail, sorry, tall and musculine stature with feminine character. You see, the feminine characters are seen in the males by the uh, in this disorder called Klinefelter's syndrome. They have a development of breeze, which is called as gynecomastia. They are sterile, that means uh, they cannot uh, reproduce, they cannot take part in the reproduce. Okay? There will be no formation of gametes. Testicles are small, high pitched voice, and the sparse body hairs are found. High pitched voice is usually seen in the females, not in the males. But here in the disorder, we can see the high pitched voice in the male. Usually, they have mental mentally retarded. Here you can see the picture, the Klinefelter syndrome. They have lower IQ than sibs, siblings, and tall stature, poor muscle tone, reduced secondary sexual characters, gynecomastia, which is a male priest and small testes and infertility. This is seen in the client filters. Hope you have understood. Let's go to the next explanation about the Turner's syndrome. Turner's syndrome, just now we have discussed. Turner's syndrome have the defect in sex chromosomes and genotype will be OX, that means one X is lost. Only single X is seen. So the number of chromosomes reduced to 45. Usually, one in 5,000 live births have this uh, disease called Turner's syndrome. Only viable mean monosomy is seen in the humans. These women who have only X chromosome are sterile females, short stature. They remain short. Breast and ovaries are underdeveloped. In the less pubic hair is seen in the uh, Turner's, the people with Turner's. Here you can see the 
picture of um, the patient. Let's go to the next question. What is Down syndrome? It is also a kind of a genetic abnormality where autosomes are abnormal. So, so far we have seen the allosomes abnormality. Allosomes means uh, the sex chromosomes. Autosomes means uh, the first 22 pairs of chromosomes are called autosomes. Trisomy of 21st set. Okay? So this causes the Down syndrome where karyotype is 47, XX plus 21 plus. So the number of chromosome increases to 47. It's called as Down syndrome. The affected individual is short stature with small round head. Furrowed tongue is seen in them and partially open mouth. Physical and psychomotor and mental development is retarded. They are physical. So we can see these kind of symptoms in the patients of Down syndrome. We will see the slide also regarding this question. Let's go to the next question, which is the lionization. What is lionization? Lionization is most important and more, mostly repeated question. The inactivation of an X chromosome is called a lionization. One of the two copies of the X chromosomes present in the body cells of female mammals is inactivated. <laughs> in the bar bodies, we have learned this. So female have extra X chromosome in their genotype. They have XX in their sex chromosomes. In the two sex chromosomes, one X undergoes the heterochromatization or inactivation. The condition is known as, the process is known as lionization. The condition is known as heterochromatization. Okay. So lionization means the, the activation of X chromosome. <laughs> okay. Let's go to the next. Going to that. Let's see the slide regarding Down syndrome. Here you can see the structure. Here you can see some of the uh, examples. You can see the picture also of the patient. Defect is seen in the autochromosomes and the genotype is trisomy of 21st chromosome. Okay? And the number of chromosomes increased to 47. Mostly seen in 1 in 700 live birth. They are short statured with small round head. Here in the picture you can see, they look short and they have a round head. So some kind of genetic abnormality you can see in there, yes. isn't it? Furrowed tongue is seen so with partially open. Body palm, <laughs> broad palms with the palm crease. So, so we can see the broad palms in them. Uh, it's called a Mongolism or Mongolian ideology. Okay. They are mostly susceptible to heart disease and respiratory problems. Okay. They have a shorter, <coughs> usually they have a short lifespan. Their physical, psychomotor and mental development is usually retarded. Okay. That is about the Down syndrome. Let's go <coughs> to the next question. What is sex linked inheritance? All these questions are of two marks. Okay. What is sex linked inheritance? The name itself says the sex chromosomes carry sex linked genes for some traits that are unrelated to sex characteristics. And the inheritance is called as sex linked inheritance. Okay. What is crisscross inheritance? In the crisscross inheritance, the inheritance pattern is uh, somehow different. What will be the answer? See that, see the slide. The transmission of a character from father to grandson through his daughter is called as crisscross inheritance. Here the transmission character is transmitted from father not to not to mother or not to the son. It is directly uh, transferring to the uh, grandson okay through using the daughter in crisscross inheritance the characters appear in alternate generation only okay? the sex linked characters exhibit this crisscross type of inheritance okay. 
examples are hemophilia. Let's see the picture regarding the crisscross inheritance. Before going to learn about that, let's have a little basics about what is the DNA gene and uh, the cell nucleus. Here you can see, this is a cell. We have studied about cell in first year and uh, from ninth class itself. Cell has a nucleus, nucleus have a chromosome in them. There are 23 pairs of chromosome in human cell. And chromosome, if you see the ultra structure, you, you find a DNA which is uh, enveloped and uh, which has nucleosome and histone proteins. So these DNA, if we see the ultra structure of it, looks like a double helix structure, <coughs> which is proposed by Watson and Crick. And uh, the part of the DNA is called as a gene. Okay. The part of DNA is called a gene. Gene structure, if you see, they have nucleotide chain, chain-like structure. This nucleotide uh, chain is formed by the um, nucleotide base pairs. So these base pairs are nothing but uh, guanine, cytosine, adenine, and thymine. Okay, adenine always binds with the thymine and guanine always binds with the cytosine. Okay, so between the no, between these base pairs, there are the bonds which are present. They are called hydrogen bonds. Hope you understood the, the basic structure of DNA and the meaning of gene, uh, chromosome and histone. <coughs> Let's go to the uh, next part. Sex-linked inheritance. Just now we have seen. So sex-linked genes means what? The genes which are present on the X or Y Okay, see the slide. Genes are present, present on the X or Y chromosomes are called sex-linked genes because they are linked to these X and Y. These are also called as linked genes. If the linked genes are present on the X chromosome, they are called X-linked genes. If the genes are uh, only remains in the Y, y chromosome, it's called Y-linked genes. So some genes are located on the X chromosome and also on the Y chromosome. They are called the X, Y linked genes. Okay. Hope you are understanding about it. So linked genes are the genes that are likely to be inherited together because they are physically close to one another on the same chromosome. Why these linked genes are inherited together because they are physically close, they are located, their location is um, very close. During meiosis, chromosomes are recombined, resulting in gene swaps between homologous chromosomes. Okay, let's go to the next part. What is junk DNA? So we must know about this. Junk is the extra DNA part which is unused, useless uh, DNA is also called as a junk DNA. Let's see the proper answer for this question. Some DNA regulating the expression of the genes that code for specific proteins. So the remaining non-functional DNA is called junk DNA. Non-functional means nothing but the useless. So some uh, part of the DNA has genes and these genes are uh, useful for uh, influencing a character. But some other parts, remaining part of the DNA, which is non-functional, which has no, uh, which doesn't code for any protein, which has no use, they are called as junk DNA, okay? So we have the more percentage of DNA of our body is a junk DNA. What are VNTRs? So we learned about this VNTRs while we were learning about DNA fingerprinting, isn't it? So let's see what they are. To no two people other than identical twins, no two people have exactly same sequence of bases in their DNA. Okay? Restriction, fragment, length, polymorphs, as well are the characteristic to every person's DNA. 
they are called the variable number tandem repeats which is termed as entrs and are useful as genetic markers okay so the, these vntrs which are called variable number tandem repeats are useful for identifying they are, they are useful for the dna fingerprinting identifying the persons okay so it is a kind of a unique uh, fingerprint okay so only in the identical twins we find uh, uh, poly these uh, replicas as same but uh, all the other people have different uh, vntrs in their body on the slide you can see the example of repeat section of witten's dna they have 24 repeats of gt and 16 repeats of at and gg and 66 repeats of att is att these are nitrogenous bases okay where it is getting matched you can see the section of suspected dna has 49 repeats of gt and 16 repeats of at and gt and see the crime scene here crime scene here has the same repeats as the person 2 Person two has forty nine repeats of GT. The crime scene here. The person who is committed the crime. Uh, there we have uh, um, the police and the DNA fingerprinting. Uh, for the DNA fingerprinting, they collect some samples. So these samples have the same repeats as the suspect's DNA. So we can decide that. person 2 is the criminal okay, this is how we see that we see about the dna fingerprinting there we find the nitrogenous bases number equal okay, it's called dna fingerprinting since they are repeats uh, they are called as variable number tandem repeats <coughs> let's go to the next question this is for the four marks describe erythroblastosis italis okay so in two marks we have learned about it but see the answer for the four marks rh antigens and anti rh antibodies are involved in the disorder erythroblastosis fetalis or hemolytic disorder of the newborn okay so it occurs in an rh fetus <coughs> whose father is rh positive and the mother is rh negative an rh positive person has rh antigen and no antibodies an rh positive person has no antigen or antibodies okay but antibodies may develop in rh negative person when the blood from the rh positive enters into him okay when the mother is rh positive and the father is rh negative the developing embryo is also rh positive here you can see in the rh positive contain the antigens so these antigens enter the mother's blood passing through the placenta and sensitize the mother so rh negative mother carrying the rh positive child in the time of delivery their blood is added to the mother when the blood is added to mother mother is sensitized and start producing the antibodies against rh positive okay so the mother starts develop antibodies against rh antigen see the slide by the same by the time these antibodies are fully developed the first baby is born safely right for the second pregnancy see the second pregnancy the mother now has fully developed antibodies against rh antigen now the second child is also rh positive if the second child is also positive with rh antigens the rh antibodies which are formed in the mother developed in the mother they enter the developing fetus and causes hemolysis destruction of rbc and this leads to death of the fetus immediately after the birth why the mother's antibodies are transferred to the baby because um, with the help of this placenta and the umbilical cord mother's antibodies are transferred okay so this transfer of antibodies against the rh they start uh, killing the baby okay they start destroying the rbc of the baby hence it is called erythroblastosis fetalis okay let's see the picture regarding this 
regarding this see the picture how rh hemolytic disease is usually developed rh positive father rh negative mother both are uh, married and uh, they got a child with rh positive so rh negative mother with rh positive baby here you can see negative mother and positive baby so in the time of uh, uh, in the time of delivery what is happening rh positive antigens are uh, reached to the mother's blood so what happens the antibodies are produced in the uh, mother's antibody see here the mother's body what happened the antibodies are produced against the antigen rh okay so this uh, mother when she has another child second child these already formed antibodies enter the baby through the placenta and umbilical cord and what happens they start to destroy the uh, erythroblast cells erythroblast means the the immature rbc are called usually erythroblast so these erythroblast are destroyed and uh, in turn the child gets die it's called fetalis so erythroblastosis fetalis is due to the rh incompatibility okay hope you have understood this let's go to the next question now let's practice some of the neat questions okay which are previously uh, repeated in the neat and if you see those questions you will have a primary idea about how the question paper is usually gets created okay let's see question humans sex is determined by okay what are the options sex chromosomes of father sex chromosomes of mother and quantity of sperm in the semen or size of egg to be fertilized what is the answer can you guess yes the answer is sex chromosomes of father father has xy chromosomes in their genotype and in which two gam two types of gametes are found the gametes which uh, which is having x chromosome then they can make a, a female child and the gamete with y chromosome can make the male child okay so this is how sex is determined by the males okay let's see the next question a gene showing codominance has what it has one allele dominant on the other both alleles independently expressed in the heterozygote alleles tightly tightly linked on the same chromosome alleles that are re, uh, recessive to each other the answer regarding this question is if both alleles both alleles are dominant to each other in the heterozygotes since both of them are dominant it's called codominance if only single allele is dominant it's called a dominance only dominance okay so since both alleles are dominant to each other it's called codominance codominance let's go to the next question regarding in his in his classic experiment on peas the mendel did not use what mendel did not use the seed shape seed color pod length all the above the answer is pod length because he has uh, taken the character of pod color but uh, not the pod length okay so that's why the answer is c regarding this question let's go to the next question how many pairs of contrasting correct characters in pea plants were identified or studied by mendel in his experiment how many pairs you should uh, guess this answer because it is already studied uh, a9 b5 c6 and d7 can you guess the answer yes the answer is 7 okay 7 is the right answer regarding this question let's go to the next question a disease caused by an autosomal primary non disjunction is okay turner's syndrome down's syndrome klein felter's syndrome sickle cell anemia the answer is down syndrome because the turner syndrome and klein felter syndrome are both caused by the disorder in the allosomes allosome means x chromosomes but a down syndrome is because of the 21st trisomy isn't it 21st chromosome comes under the autosomes since it comes under under the autosomes the answer regarding this question is down syndrome 
what about sickle cell anemia sickle cell anemia is caused by the point mutations okay it is because of the alteration in the gene alteration in the gene but whereas down syndrome is because of the alteration or the addition or removal removal of the uh, removal or addition of the chromosomes okay let's go to the next question sixth question the mechanism that causes a gene to move from one linked group to another is called the answer is translocation okay crossing over means exchanging the gene but here what is happening one linked group to another linked group that's called translocation duplication means uh, formation of dupli uh, duplication uh, of the genes is called duplication none of the above the answer is translocation because it is uh, transferring from one location to another location let's go to the next question a true breeding plant is always homozygous recessive in its genetic constitution produced due to cross pollination among unrelated plants no one that is able to breed on its own no near homozygous and produce offspring of its own kind this is the answer to this question let's go to the next question the incorrect statement with regard to hemophilia is hemophilia is x linked inheritance x linked disease isn't it see the statements it is a dominant disease no actually hemophilia is x linked recessive disease so single protein involved in the clotting of the blood is affected is correct it is a recessive disease yes it is correct none of the above is wrong so the correct incorrect statement regarding this question is dominant disease so it is not a dominant disease let's go to the ninth question a normal vision the man who fa whose father was color blind marries a woman whose father was also color blind they have their first child as a daughter what are the chances that a child would also be color blind chances are 0% why because the color, the normal visioned father has uh, marries a woman who has who has his father as color color blind so mother has a carrier and father is completely uh, normal so from father they receive a y chromosome and from mother they receive this healthy x chromosome hence the possibility of having this color blind is 0% why it is zero because they have a daughter daughter will always be a carrier okay not the uh, not usually the affected person let's go to the next question mutations mutation can be induced uh with with what with the gamma radiations usually okay, the answer regarding this question is gamma radiations okay, that's all uh, for today thank you dear students and uh, i wish you all the best hope you understood the class if you have any doubts regarding the questions uh, regarding the concepts of the questions already we have made classes regarding this uh, genetics chapter you can see in the price website all the videos are already available and uh, you can watch whenever you want okay so there in the lessons when the explanation of lessons it is detailedly explained okay hope you have understood the class uh, thank you for watching if you have any more doubts you can contact your uh, a subject teacher and keep following the webinar classes thank you
Sir. Sir, the class is completed. You can end the meeting. Sir. Class is completed. You can end the meeting. Thank you. Why is for a director, sir? Class is completed, sir. Okay.